Good afternoon. I am actually so excited for today's live purely because I'm going to make something for my own dad. So dad, if you are watching before Father's Day, turn off, switch off now, else your gift is going to be spoiled. Um, I have an adorable dad. Um, I think if something happens in our lives, both to me, Yakus, or the kids, the first person we would call is my father. I think firstly because he's such a good listener and he's someone that has experience, life experience, and he, he will listen and he will give such spot on advice. He's got amazing people skills and someone that I truly look up to. But during, grow, during our growing up years, we've had loads of fun. My dad was that dad that would come home after work and we would play cricket outside and the entire neighbor's children would join. We would run to Orkney Fall, who, whoever lives in that area, and we would go climb over the wall and swim in the public swimming pool. Um, but my dad was amazing and extremely talented and he knew how to fix almost anything with Puma Bulb. Something that I'm going to include in his gift for Father's Day. And he could also fix anything with mom's tweezers. So dad, I bought you your um, own pair of tweezers so that mom, whenever she wants to do her eyebrows, um, hopefully by now her tweezers are not used to fix things. And if you still use tweezers for fixing stuff, you now have your own. So today's Father's Day is absol absolutely an inspiration um, that I received from my own dad growing up. Yeah, he spent time with us, quality time, and the memories, childhood memories I have are all absolutely amazing. So what we are going to do today is we are going to use our console jars that we've cleaned and we are going to pack dad a survival kit and Puma Balm and a tweezer will be included in my dad's. We are going to paint sections with it um, in choco paint. I'll show you exactly how step by step. Um, here's the next console jar. So there we have some soft cuddles for dad. I'll show how to personalize a, a handkerchief for dad. So whenever dads are using stenciled handkerchiefs, everyone will know that's a choco dad. And then we are also going to just spoil dad with some dad goodies, dad feel, some drivel. Something that we've also done for this Father's Day gift is to make dad his own built on boards. Whenever you have friends or family over and you want to serve cheese and biltong or snacks um, while dad is brying, so these are something that is custom made for dad. And the techniques we'll show and share today will apply to these as well. Just gonna move that out of the way. So there's everything that's going to be in this kit for dad. I am going to work on our palette box where we are going to add these gifts and I'll show how to wash, how to do layered stenciling. Trudy from um, Pulakwane is the queen of layered stenciling and she inspired this. Um, and then we'll also show there were questions as we have new members on the group all the time. If you can mix choco paint into the stencil of Paris, I will try to answer as many questions on stenciling as possible. Now, first step when whitewashing. So I just want to subtly change the color of the wood. I don't want to paint a solid coat of paint in a paint color on the wood. I still want to see the, the grain of the wood, the colors of the wood, and just in a very subtle way, change the color. So first of all, I'm going to use a damp cloth. Now this can be a rag, any piece t-shirt material, any piece of cloth you have, 
mutton cloth, cheese cloth, and I'm first wiping my wood. It's raw timber, it doesn't have any treatment or oil on, and that is key for a lime wash or whitewash effect, and that's exactly what we are going to do now. It's a lime wash or a whitewash technique. Next, I'm going to add some paint onto the same damp cloth. So I'll just make sure there's a nice clean section on my cloth. The color I'm adding is goodness. It's a very soft, subtle green. And I'm just spreading it everywhere onto my damp cloth. And I wipe my piece of wood. Now these crates are available. It's made for chalk or paint. You can inquire from your nearest stockist. You can order online. And I was thinking this morning, um, dads are special. Um, and I think especially for a daughter, a dad is a very special human. Um, we shouldn't wait for one year in the one day in the year to celebrate Father's Day. We can do it much more often. Okay, this is done. So it's a subtle change. You can still see the grain of the wood. And now I'm going to start with stencil work. The stencil I'm going to use is this one. And I'll also show how to pattern repeat the stencil. So my wood is wet. It's not um, necessarily going, going to be easy right away for the masking tape to grip. So can I work like this? Will you be able to see, Crystal? I'm just going to work flat. I'm going to try the masking tape, but I know it likes a dry surface. Okay, I'm going to secure, secure it with my free hand to make sure it doesn't move and just make sure that it's sitting nice and straight on my surface. I don't want to stencil this bottom section. So let me just secure this off. Once again, it is wet still. As long as the masking tape just sits there to protect the wood. it's nice and straight use my stencil brush now a stencil brush works best for smaller stencil detail and the key to success when doing stencil work is to work with very little paint so next to me I have a piece of cardboard from my stencils the backing and I'll show you later how we upcycle these as well but I will remove excess paint on there, secure my stencil with my free hand, push it flat, and then in circular motions, do my stencil work. Now this is not a perfect technique I wanna show, as it is for dad, it's a man. We know that not all men are so focused on detail, but we still want to make it pretty rustic authentic and handmade. So I move my stencil brush in circular motion and the boards that we did for the biltong and cheese servings We've done exactly the same. Oh, I turned this upside down. No wonder. The color I'm stenciling with is called Godfrey's Glimpse. And Godfrey is a very special person in the Choco factory. I just thought I would love to use Godfrey on my dad's gift. Okay, so there's the first section of our stencil work. How do we pattern repeat? 
So the best way is to put a certain section of the stencil over what was already done. Like you can see those patterns match perfectly. Not all stencils do, but most of them um, does. So you will immediately see when looking at a stencil, whether it's a pattern repeat stencil or not, when looking at this one, it's geometrical shapes. Um, you can immediately see what happens on this end happens there. So this is the perfect pattern repeat design. I put it back, secure it again with my free hand. Masking tape is best for the life. We don't have time to wait in between coats for the paint to dry, but you could leave it in the sun, the whitewash. Just make sure it dries well before you start stenciling. I don't use too much paint. You can rather, should you want to, add another coat. And this will prevent the paint from leaking underneath your stencil, if leaking does occur. You use some sandpaper and you just sand um, to remove any blotches or unevenness. Okay, and this is done and we have a perfect, let me just do that last section as well, that it's nicely ended off. We have a nicely pattern repeated surface. How beautiful is that? I'm going to leave that masking tape there. What I, want, I want it to sit there for the rest. We can paint that. We can maybe antique glaze it. The reason why I want to leave it there, on this specific rate, there is a quite indent on that area. And later when we work with a stencil of Paris, this might cause a problem. Stencil of Paris requires, requires a very flat, smooth surface. Okay. Next, I'm going to, let's see what we have in front of us and be creative. I'm going to use, but we are going to do something different that we've done here. And um, there, let me tell you what I've done there. So what I've done there is I have, I, with the second step, I removed my stencil, the same design, I placed it back as I've initially placed it, and let me just find it, it was like this, there it is. And what I've done is I've moved it down a few millimeters, three or four, and then I moved it to my left a few millimeters, three or four. And then I stenciled exactly the same way as I've just done with goodness. And that is how I created the shadow effect on this, on this surface. Okay, but we are going to be adventurous and playful. And what I'm going to do is I am going to use the color Dumisa. And I'm going to stencil for dad all these words. And email, because this most probably will go via email. So I'm going to leave email for last. Okay, we recently did the filming for the Choco Champs competition and during the filming session we changed things and that is what creativity is all about. The fact that things can change, that you have freedom to change things and if something isn't the way you like it, change it. That's part of being creative, no rules. That's, that's why creativity is such good therapy because no rules apply. I'm dipping my stencil brush in the color Dumisa Stream, and once again, I use very little paint in circular motion on my surface. This is now for more the colorful type. This is very muted, neutral. You will know what your dad likes. Next, I'm going to work with Shorty Story. I'm 
just here and there with shorty stencil more let's use some green some shorty and if you can hear it in the background that's maestro barking maestro gets so excited when he sees all this choco stuff lying around he think he thinks it's um it's absolutely amazing so this is now a next stencil on top of what we've already done and let's remove and there you can see some words it's subtle it's different it's colorful and i'm going to continue with some shorty on this side just that hand And that is done. We're trying to film and quiet Maestro down. So there's some color, there's some words. It is very bohemian. And next we are going to make sure that Dad knows this is for him. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to move this out of the way for a second. And I'm going to use my mixing board. This is a cutting board from the kitchen. And you can use it um, for even for choco. You can just imagine in my house, brushes and choco equipment, everything is um, everywhere. And what I'm going to do, I've just scraped some stencil of Paris on my board. It can be a paper plate, anything you have in and around the house. This can be washed, everything choco makes is water is um, is water-based eco-friendly safe to use and then i'm going to add some matte black to my stencil paste and i'm using only the tip of my scraper this is about if i would estimate 30 or 40 milliliters but please this is a creative process so no rules apply once the stencil of Paris dry, it dries three shades darker. So I want a nice dark charcoal gray when it is dry. You also don't want to add too much paint, else then the paste will be runny and it will leak in underneath your stencil. Okay, and there it's done. I just also want to mix in that bit so that nothing goes to waste. And now, just move everything out of the way. I'm going to stencil dead some words over here. So let's make sure we get this air mail in. We hate the brain, so she wishes she could see inside your brain. <laughs> it's a very dangerous experience being in my brain. I think some days, um, even the soldiers that's supposed to keep things attached inside here gets lost. Okay, so what I want to do is to make sure that Dad knows, I've sent this to him via email, what you can do to make sure that, that the stencil, whether it's paint or the paste, doesn't go into unwanted areas. Just mask those areas off for yourself. Kaylee will sometimes talk to me and then she would say, Mom, I know you're in a different place, but, but please come back. I want to tell you something. I think creativity is an escape route. We were um, 
quite hit by COVID at the factory, so we all had to jump in and work long hours. So just to be able to be here today and to be creative again is such, such an amazing experience. So I know my stencil of Paris is going to dry darker, but I just want to add more black. And this is purely so that you can see the effect quicker because you won't be sitting there until everything has dried. So I scrape some of the stencil of Paris mixed with matte black onto my paint scraper. And now I spread it over my stencil. Only that area that says email. Wash your stencils gently, directly after use with some warm soapy water and you will be able to reuse and reuse if you look after them nicely. Okay, so I even it out, make sure it's nice and even, remove while still wet and there is something embossed on the surface. And now I just want to add that this beautiful stamp that's over here. But I want to do it approved, it says. In this corner over here. I'm just pressing it down with my free hand. You can secure it with some masking tape. When you make a boo-boo, when it's still wet, just wipe away and do it again. If you want to hide anything, once it has dried, sand it or paint over it. And there's Dad's approved stamp in the top corner. And now I'll wait for this to dry and I'll sand a bit and make sure it's beautifully ended off for maybe the Dad in our house. Okay, how to paint onto glass. And this can, this step, let's just return to the crate step, can be done in various ways with various colors. There we have something more toned down. This side, we did something with color again and texture. So let me just be the inspiration to, to try something and share it with us. All of these boards were done exactly the same way, layering of different stencil designs, stenciling, and you don't even need to use stencil of Paris. Just layer it with different designs, texture and contrast. So for Dad, we are going to give him a chalk or handkerchief. This is something my dad uses and that he will love. I'm just going to move things out of my way. That I need to look out for. I'm just going to put this here. My surface is clean. My hands are clean. Okay, Dad, here comes your choco, choco gift. Your choco chief. <laughs> your choco chief. <laughs> I like that. Here comes your choco chief, Dad. And I'm just going to do these two lines on the fabric over here in matte black. Is this the nicest one or should I use this one? This, I think I like this one more. Um, 2020A41. This is the code of this stencil. Look how beautiful it is. Okay, make sure you don't get paint on Jad's, Dad's handkerchief. I have now with my dirty hands. Okay, so if that happens, wash out immediately, um, iron and then do your stencil work. Okay, I'm just going to do it here. The process will make sense and I will just do my, 
my signature over that, those blotches, Dad. Okay, I'm going to, you can wash your stencil brushes, dry them well, and then um, reuse them with different colors. We just don't have time when we do it live for all those steps. So I am going to just mask off anything that I don't want to be included on my surface. Make sure it's nice and flat. Okay, I make sure it's nice and flat. See that I do it as straight as possible. But Dad will forgive me if anything is imperfect. I dip my paintbrush in matte black. Remove excess. Once again on my same card I used previously. Secure my, my stencil with my free hand. And now I work in circular motion. Fabrics can be ironed once the paint is completely dry. It dries quick because it's such a thin layer of paint that you stencil with. So allow 40 minutes, iron it, and if you want to wash, hand wash in cold water. Pillowcases, tablecloths, t-shirts, we stencil them all. We are going to pat and repeat this as well. Something that we have done on our wooden crate is we did drill some holes in on the sides and just knotted some rope through those just to give it a nice rustic look and feel. And I remove my stencil. Put it back on so there is a repeat just to make sure I repeat it properly there's a repeat of a pattern so I move it in in that position pull it down this side and dad has a beautiful choco chief And it's subtle. Dad, you better use this. Whenever you see a gentleman using this, you know that's my dad. Okay. Remove. And the pattern repeat is perfect. And there's something bespoke that I'm going to put into Dad's jar. Okay, next. How to paint, look how beautiful. Okay, next is how to paint onto glass. So I have cleaned my glass jar properly with some lacquer thinners. That was the first very important step. Allow for the thinners to dry 40 minutes or longer. And then I've applied some better crystal. I have a, I'm, I need to know sign language. I need to know what this means and that means. <laughs> I have applied some masking tape. I like to use Hamilton's um, yellow, the yellow masking tape, especially when painting onto glass because it adheres very well to the surface. If it happens that the paint leaks through, and it can happen, you can just take a blade when you remove the masking tape, tape or your nail even, because it's not cured yet. And those areas where it has leaked, you can just um, even out. So anything can be, can be fixed. I'm going to use an artist brush, or if you don't have 
a Hamilton's enzyme brush works just as well, purely because the bristles are so nice and soft. So depending on the size of your surface, remember, different surfaces will require different tools. You are never going to paint a large furniture piece with an artist brush. You will get streakiness, even though this is very soft bristles. You need bigger applicators the, the moment your size increases. So we are going to work on quite a small area. And for that reason, I'm going to use my artist brush. And I'm going to use the color Godfrey's Glimpse again. So I just paint. I have cleaned well. I've allowed the thinness to evaporate. And a first application will never be a final application. This is your base coat. Make sure it's nice and even. And once dry, wait 20 to 40 minutes. It's winter. Everything in South Africa takes now longer to dry. In the, in the Northern Hemisphere, it's summer, there things will go quicker than here at the moment. But everything depends on weather. So I will give a nice even first coat. It's not a final perfect coat, but it's a foundation for my next coat. And I will allow for this now to dry. Very important is to wait for paint coats to dry before you start painting again else your applicator will just remove the wet paint. So I will wait 40 minutes, apply my second coat, and then almost immediately start removing the masking tape. What happens with masking tape? It builds a film. So if you wait too long to remove the masking tape, the paint dries completely on top of your masking tape. And that's when you start removing areas that you don't want to remove. So second coat and almost immediately remove your masking tape. And that's painting on glass. A last tip or inspiration I want to share is our backboards for our stencils, like the one I have used to dry my stencil brush, is the perfect surface to do handmade cards. Just look how beautiful this will be if I had to make that a homemade card. And let's use this one again. It will be beautiful. And what I'm going to do now, just to save on time, is I'm going to use, without falling from my chair, a foam roller. Okay, once again, the larger the surface, the bigger the applicator. Tips when using a foam roller is to make sure that you use an almost dry foam roller. So I'm just going to distribute some paint on a clean cutting board. And let's do this in the color Dumiso. Just a drop. I roll my roller through this. And this is also an applicator that you will use when stenciling onto walls. You make sure your roller, the paint, is evenly distributed everywhere and that it's not soaking wet off paint. And now I will press down with my free hand and I will roll. So this is a faster way, especially as your surface increases. And I want to add some blue paint. Godfrey's Glimpse. I'm going to use my spot sheet and I'm continuing here. So it's extremely random. No more buying of gift cards. You make your own. And now I'm going to use some shorty. And 
I just want to fold in, in between those colors. And my card for that is ready. I can fold it, we can write on it, and we can use it without spending additional money. <laughs> and Mess would like to know if you cut anything on these boards, won't it leave marks? On these on these boards. Mm -hmm. Okay. Annette wants to know if we cut anything on these boards, if it will leave marks. I will not cut with a bread knife on something that was painted. Something like a cheese knife that is blunt and not sharp works perfectly. But the moment you are going to dish into here with something very sharp, you will not only hurt the paint but your surface as well. Um, so, yeah, something like biltong, something that you cut with a cheese knife is perfect for this. What I will do on these boards, I will seal it with a clear glaze. I'm quickly going to show that and this is also the last step. Um, so the glaze application, we do as follows. So what the glaze does, it makes it water resistant, more stain resistant, especially for food, and it is food safe. And how we do that is, uh, once again, there aren't any, any specific rules. What I like to do these days is I mix one part glaze with one part water and apply two coats. So I'm going to show that it gives a more, more of a of a matte finish instead of really um, a sheen finish. And it still gives the protection that's needed for kitchens outside. So one part boiling water that has cooled down and then one part clear glaze. So the clear glaze, chocolate has a building sealant. So on the glass, even on these boards, a sealant is not necessary unless you want to use it and you want to rinse it under a tap. You frequently want to use it. Kitchens, bathrooms, outdoors, where there's steam, where there is dirt, fattiness, where there is UV and water, we do recommend to use the clear glaze for extra protection. And one part clear glaze. We have another question. Okay. Emily would like to know, can we make our own stencils? Um, can we order our own stencils from Chocolate? Anneli wants to know, can you order your own stencils from Choco? Yes, you definitely can. You can inquire from your nearest stockers to send us the details what you want, or you can contact head office. We will gladly assist. What I'm going to use as the application for my, with, um, for my glaze is a damp microfiber cloth. So I dampen my microfiber cloth in normal water it can also be cooled down, boiling water that has cooled down, due to the fact that tap water contaminates paint products. That's why we recommend to use water that has boiled and that is cool, so don't use hot water. I dip my damp microfiber cloth, so I've squeezed out excess moisture first. I dip it in my glaze and water mix. I squeeze out excess moisture, but it's still very damp. And then in a well lit space, I just wipe it onto my paint, painted surface, apply this four hours after you've painted at least. What I like to do is wait overnight, especially in cooler, more humid temperatures. The paint dries quickly, but there's still a curing time that's needed before we apply the glaze. And this is it. Now I know it is f protected, it's more stain resistant. I can rinse it under a, un under a tap, don't soak it in water. Just rinse under a tap. Choco is not dishwasher safe. And there I have something very bespoke and beautiful that can be used. Our plates in our house when we eat pizza and burgers look like this, they're just a bit larger. And that's me for today, before Father's Day 2021. Um, special thoughts for those that, whose fathers are in hospital and for those that have lost their fathers recently. I know of people. Um, we carry you in our thoughts and we send out special hugs and love and greetings to you all. Enjoy Father's Day, make it special. And then Hamilton's has 
sponsored us a beautiful hamper and we will include some choco projects products <laughs> if you will send us on our main Facebook page, Choco Paints on Facebook, something that you have created for your dad or that your children has, have created. We can't wait to see that. But stay healthy, stay blessed, stay creative, stay motivated. Till next week.